Here we go, the final back nine of the four chapters. Chapter one, Fire. Big shout out to Axiom Discs for sponsoring the event. We got big things on the horizon here, namely this one of one pound bag. I'm Chris DeMarco with Lefty McGovern and Dan Schifrin, and today we're gonna be crowning the Fire Champion. Here's the lead card again. Zach Tassone, Corey Snyder, Connor Henderson, and Kyle Fairbanks are out here duking it out to see who's gonna walk away with that one of one pound bag. Yeah, we had some um, leadership uh, s- switch ups in the front nine there. Corey started off with a two stroke lead, but quickly lost that in the first three holes. Now Connor and Zach are sitting atop the leaderboard with Andrew Stockman here rising up from the chase car with a pretty fire back nine, uh, front he nine. He did not me. have the drone clip for hole 10. So here's a shot of James Kalinski just absolutely piercing this hole, barely. showing you exactly what to do on this 503 foot par four. Love any way to get James in the videos. I got him coming up on hole 11. <laughs> Snyder a bit inside, but a nice play off the road. That's a common spot to be. He'll probably go back door. Now the common spot for mortals would be to lay one up by that grill you see there, straight down the center, and then putting it up over the road. Oh, squeeze grill. Him, baby. Right by the horseshoe, very common landing zone, very great throw. Zachary Tassone, he's got a share part of the lead right now with Connor, sitting at negative 12. That's a beautiful little light turnover there. Nice position play from Zachary. He's got a lot of distance I've noticed, but He's not eager to use it in situations where he doesn't need to, which is really great. And Kyle gets an unlucky bounce, but he will stay in bounds. Here for a second shot. Connor Henderson approaching the green here. Connor Henderson's got swag for days out there on the course. He's definitely got his own style, and that's gonna be a tap and birdie for him on hole 10. Corey's gotta get crafty here. Wow, a little, very deep actually. I'm not sure if he was running that, but he's gonna have a difficult time coming back for his birdie. I've never seen anybody out there. I wonder if he's going to be able to squeak, tru- uh, squeak through those couple trees there. All right. Zach lays up for his par. Great hit from Zach. Yeah, that's a big putt right there. It looks like we missed Corey's third shot, but taps in the par nonetheless. That was gonna be a really tough birdie to snag from where he was. Yeah, not sure what happened there, but takes the bogey. Nice playing from Connor Henderson stepping into the back nine here. Hole 11, par three, 282 feet, left to right shot. Would be interesting to see people go on that right side there, but it's just not a viable option. Connor here has the box, puts up an effortless forehand. Oh yeah. That's parked. I'm a big Connor Henderson guy. (laughs) 
Corey with the large turnover. Snuggles up right next to Connor. That was a great drive. Yeah, that was huge. Perfect usage of that airspace there. Just in between the ground and the tree line. To Sone going with the forehand here. That looked inside, but he pushed it so far with such lack of effort. This is shaping up to be a star frame. I'm gonna call it right now. We don't even have all the drives done. So it's not really a challenge. No pressure, Kyle. Lefty, I made that same gamble, man. I, I wish the I wish the best for you. That's why they pay us the big bucks. Exactly, Dan. A little bit further than he would have wanted, but Kyle is great. About those paychecks. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle for his two. Called it. Nubs Kyle it in. Fairbanks. Wow. <laughs> With the fair basket. <laughs> Look at that smile. Love that reaction. Those nubs on that tray are not usually that kind, but just says, here you go. Welcome. Welcome home. Yeah, Kyle's in a tough position right here. He's on a card with some big hitters. Had a couple tough breaks on the wooded part of the front nine, so you love to see that kind of good energy there. Always respect that. Connor Henderson grabs his two. And there's another star frame for you. Here you go, lefty. Hole 12, par 4, 531 feet. Our players are going to be looking to unload a drive, but those with bigger arms are going to have to check their distance because it is very possible to go long OB. Um, position off the tee is really paramount, and you'll find yourself with a pretty routine upshot into the green. I cannot wait to see what kind of distance these guys have. Distance control, angle control. We got the wind picking up here. Camp Tecumseh giving our players everything she's got here. The roosters are making noise out there. <laughs> Any course that has a miniature farm on it, you know it's going to be good. You know it's going to be a great time. <laughs> is that a rule of thumb? Do I? Yeah, yeah. Is there a filter on U Disc for courses with miniature farms on them? <laughs> great Heiser flipping shot from Corey there. He's going to like that position. So Tassone was able to stay with Connor on the last hole after he slipped away with a one stroke lead. He plays a nice, for him, position shot out to the left side. Tree is a little bit in his way, but he's got a crafty forehand. I think he's looking at a three here. And Fairbanks. That's his preferred line. Just that light hyzer that flips up, never really fully turns over, but still is able to push forward on hyzer. He seems to go to that on most holes. Sorry, I'm still, I'm still, I can't get over uh, Zach's hat catch. He's, he's, he's very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Great approach from Connor. Drop it in. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be two in a row for Kyle here on the back nine. Here we go, Kyle. Let's keep it in. Very nice upshot. Uh, another star frame, anyone? Most likely. Corey dropped an absolute dime on this fairway. Look at that positioning right there. I mean, electrical pole may be kind of in his way, debatably, but... That's such a good drive. Nothing is ever in Corey's way. He has clear eyes and a full heart. <laughs> Can't lose. 
Yeah, Corey's a fantastic guy. He had a rough stretch during the front nine, but his vibes were on point the whole time. He was pointing out different things on the fairway for me to get shots of. Had a real knowledge of the course and... And the game. And things to do with nature. Money. One star frame, please. Thank Two you. in a row? Anyone? <laughs> we got a nice spread here as the players start to heat up on this open, scorable back nine. Hole 13, par three, 200 feet. Our players have the potential to make very quick work of this hole. Henderson lining one up on the right side. Yeah. Gets that road skip. Right where you want it. Gives the pole a little kiss. And super smooth, super clean. It's never a dirty. doubt. I'm telling you, man, those, those roosters are a factor. Drop. That's in the air. Go in the hole. Wow. Did I land there earlier? I, yeah, but... <laughs> Beautiful pull from Corey there. Six, seven feet long in the air there. Nice low little zone shot. Four solid drives from our lead card. Yeah. This is the kind of disc golf we wanted to see here with this tournament. Try to get as much competition as we could out there. And we're seeing it here. Man. Just low from Kyle. He was starting to heat up. A couple that, holes left. That OB directly behind the basket could definitely come into play when you're putting from that angle. That's a confident putter. So perfect, right? like Strong it's and true like dead center. Like it's, it's like it's clipped. Yes. <laughs> nice hit from Corey Snyder there. And he's just so in this right now. He had the hot round in round one. And he hasn't been more than a stroke or two off the lead here. And Connor has yet to putt. Yeah, you yeah, saved the last hole, too. of course. You love to see that. Hold that on, Fairbanks. Bag on. Yeah, Take the two and go. That's four in a row for Connor on the back nine here. Can't wait to watch this. Yeah, these guys are making quick work of this course here. Hole 14, par three, 336 feet. Lightly uphill shot here. The right side is a little crowded with the tree and bench, but because of the right to left slope, it's a real nice funnel into the basket if you can just get one out to the right. John Copeland was saying to me when we did that little spotlight that he felt that this field was the perfect field for this course. The pros love coming out here and attacking the course, trying to go 15, 16 down, but when we're seeing scores like 9, 10, 11, I mean, that's very similar to the types of scores you see on more difficult courses on the pro level. So, really suitable course for this field. I can't wait to get to Warwick up next on May 28th for Chapter 2 Air. Oh, yeah, speaking of incredible courses, Warwick is a dime. Yeah, Warwick's incredible. I can't wait to get up there. I can't wait to make the layout. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do yet. Typically, uh, it's really standard to go with, you know, two of the different layouts, but I might try to create something mixed and play the same layout both rounds. Great hit from Kyle. Also incredible, I mean, not a great drive, but incredible power on the drive going uh, like 50 long on a full hyzer throw. That was sensational birdie. I had the longest putt of the round. The other long putt he had was as close as that one, I think. Yeah. Knocking it down. You gotta respect a guy that's not stepping from that distance. And that looks like a money putt from Connor Henderson, but the tailwind knocked it down. You saw the adjustment. You saw him extend a little higher, but still not high enough. To Sone? 
unable to capitalize on the chance to tie the lead here. Coming into a pretty dicey hole. Corey Up knows next. what he needs to do here. Yeah, he's got a chance. Not quite. Very confident run. Yeah, a little wide right there for Corey. Yeah, our lead card struggling a bit to convert on those edge of circle putts. I think you should feel bad no matter what. It does not get much better than this right here. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. I like that was good, Zach. I like him. He's a friend, I swear. <laughs> We were right, they have played together before, clearly. <laughs> Fairbanks with the only birdie, taking a stroke on our lead card. Hole 15, par 3, 241. T-pad on the right side of your screen, basket on the left, and that tree in the middle is your main obstacle to contend with. I feel that the backhand shot is a more natural line, but it brings the tree quite a bit in play. Fairbanks agrees. And there's another hyzer shot from Fairbanks. Yeah, if that's in circle two, we can consider that a tap in form. <laughs> Henderson swinging this one out way wide. He's gonna need a skip gently plays itself to about 45 feet. Corey's looking determined here. He's ready to put some serious pressure I like on the, the rest height of the on field. That. Nestles up right in circle one. Great drive from Corey. Beautiful throw. I'm a huge fan of his follow through. It's a really unique form he's got. Yeah. Lefty, you said that he was saying he's been playing for how long? Something very long. Like 14 or 18 uh, years, something like that. You don't see very many uh, experienced disc golfers like that in New Jersey. That's for sure. There's no, you have to cut down a bunch of trees, though. Because there's really no line. Yeah, you'd have to throw like a forehand. He is built for this game. As we see Zach take a different route from everybody else, kind of puts himself in a little bit of trouble. He's going to make easy work of that upshot. Tassone goes from so many different styles in that like 80 to 100 range. I've seen him do a step putt, jump putt, backhand, forehand. Nice little mixture there. I wonder if it's like the green that he's considering with those different approaches or what? I know certain players uh, comment about how they treat every single putt differently, like it's its own unique shot and, you know, uh, that could have been a determining factor for Hassan, you know, what stance he goes with. Corey, a master of the comebacker. That's one of the big differences that we're seeing here on this lead card as compared to the rest of the field at our typical events. The confidence on the putt, the same level of confidence from all over the green. We have not seen a three putt here all day. Yeah, that just shows that uh, this is the best C tier event in New Jersey history. <laughs> because of that stat. That and that alone. Not because we saw a 1024 rated round, not because we got a pound bag, all, you know, all that stuff is cool, but it's the putting thing. Our players tapping out their threes as we move into hole 16. Thank you to Axiom Discs for sponsoring this event. We got three more tournaments left after this one, but it's time to figure out who is going to be crowned the fire champion. Really tight field up at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, Chris, 
just like before, the top three have solidified themselves as the three best golfers out here. Andrew Stockland is making a wild push here as we uh, come into the last couple holes. Hole 16, par 4, 639 feet. We saw our feature card struggle on this one. It's a very technical hole, uphill, hooks up to the right at the end. It's lined with OB on either side. And that green is deceivingly slopy on the back end, which is where you want to attack because the left side OB is very tight to that green. And we're coming down the final stretch here of chapter one, fire. Lefty McGovern of Disc Golf Review Network Online stated that this was the greatest C-tier tournament of all time in New Jersey. So uh, that, that sounds like a huge deal to me. Yeah, that's the reports that I'm getting in, uh, you know, the early feedback and whatnot uh, from the event, the polls that were taken there <laughs> on the grounds. Everyone just had a great time. I didn't see any of the pollsters out there. Um, that's how good they are. Yeah. They're, they're like ninjas. Beautiful drive from Connor Henderson. Kyle almost <laughs> falling off his back. Fairbanks almost falling off the cart. <laughs> Kyle, I promise you, I swear, I really just needed to see Henderson run that one back. And then when I went to go look again, I saw him almost fall over. Nice line out wide right. He does get a little skip off the road, but Snyder's still kind of on that slanty part of the hill. And while these guys do have a lot of distance, it's really nice if you can get yourself to the flat part up top. <laughs> Connor showing Kyle something really interesting as Zach drives. Yeah, what a, what a vibe this card was, man. This sport is such a gem. It's really unbelievable. I want, I, you know, I want, it's one of those things where it feels almost too good to be true. The level of competition that you can find out there in the course and, and determination and focus and swagger, uh, but just the the overarching agreement to just be chill out there. You know, that's what you want to see. You want to see people being chill, having a good time, and not bugging out. Yeah, everyone out here is a little bit different, but all in all, everyone's the same. Everyone is out here to bring great vibes. Great ground play from Kyle. Oh my goodness. What a shot from Corey. That was, that was a massive skip. I would love to know more about how he's getting that kind of ground play. That. The angle control that. is crazy. Those low driven drives and that follow through. That had to be a really fast disc to to skip like that, I'm imagining. Big shout out to Dan Schifrin who wrote that tasty lick that you heard during the beautiful drone flight of yeah, this I hole that Zachary Disson almost just had a field ace on. <laughs> this basket getting run. Ooh. Really showing how close that was, but again, that green is slopey. Oh, what a bit! Another high left spit out for Connor. That was a great bid from that distance. Just needed a little bit more stank on it. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that oomph, that uh. A little bit more stank. Corey, most of his misses seem to be out to the right side, so he's definitely putting good power on it. Just can't quite seem to hone in on the basket. 10-24 rated first round. We know he's capable of more. He's still within striking distance. But Zachary Tassone cashes one in. And he thanks the card for a nifty tip out there. Further highlighting how great the vibes are. Everybody's just rooting for good disc golf. Nice. Comeback, Corey. 
buries it in the bucket. Seriously, every single comebacker he's had, he's absolutely sank it. Comeback, Corey. Kyle tapping out. Connor almost converting on the three there, but taking the par instead. And we have got a tie ball game coming into the one of the most beautifully scenic holes in New Jersey. This eloquently guarded green is very attackable, but there are a couple different factors to contend with. We've got the drop zone here that lines where the flags are positioned. Drop zone's about 10 feet inside. And you gotta cross over to be in bounds. But these, these guys are the type of players that have to be careful. They can definitely air one out too long over this path. And Zachary Tasson just playing really good disc golf. I really and like that showcasing line. really oh, great hat catches. And he knows, he knows the stakes here. Nice. Believe it or not, he can see the cameras at the course. He's aware that this I, is being filmed. I don't believe it. Because, yeah, just casual 441 foot ace run. Was that a putter, too? What an excellent shot. Gorgeous hat grab. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Now, if you're Connor Henderson, you've got to be feeling the pressure. Tassone coming off a birdie on the last hole. He almost ran the basket, then hit the long putt. Now he runs the basket here. Henderson a bit wide. Doesn't nah. make it back. Yeah, that path can be unforgiving. Crucial miss from Henderson. So Tasson has a chance to gain a stroke. Connor will be coming from the drop zone, shooting three to stay at 16. We've got Corey Snyder on the green with a look to get to 15. And Tasson could potentially gain one and two to 17. That's a great run. He needed to be aggressive there. This would be two strokes on Connor. Just low. He dialed in the left to right there, but a little bit low. Kind of a bit of a headwind here. This green almost always has a headwind on it coming from that side. Tricky low ceiling putt for Zach there. Zach had a chance to go up two on Connor, but instead it looks like they're gonna go into the last hole just separated by one stroke. This is the perfect finishing hole for this situation. Such a so monster. So much can happen. Yeah. It is such a monster. So much distance coming up here on hole 18. The crowned jewel of Pittstown, New Jersey. Cue the marching band. And our players will be heading to the lodge on the lake afterward. No, they won't. That's just completely a <laughs> lie. Cam Tecumseh, uh, hole 18, par 5, 902 feet. The fire champion is one hole away from being crowned with a custom one of one pound bag as we head down this beautiful, technical, open fairway. The Titans up as she goes. I got T. Shout out to all the players here on lead card. Shout out to all the cameramen. Shout out to John Copeland of Camp Tecumseh. All the New Jersey disc golfers that came out. Those who came from other states. Tassone, this one's a bit straight. Hooking up left. Easy kick right. Left, that's fine too. It's fine, should be in bounds. He did catch his hat. And he'll take that. Again, players take note of the positivity that these players display after shots that are less than ideal. They don't they don't go down the fairway thinking about the previous bad shot. Most players would be having a meltdown in that situation and he's just like, "Nope, I'm good." 
Yeah, all things considered, with how easy it is to turn something over right into the out of bounds, it's it's better to be safe, you know. And Corey just threading the needle right down this fairway. Doesn't need any more room than he's given. Dead center. Corey, he did have a rough front nine, but his back nine has been, you know, he, he's had no misses and he has not had a bad kick off the ground or a tree in quite some time. Connor Henderson on the tee here at Chapter One Fire. Swagadelic. Similar fate to Tassone. He gets a little bit less distance and hits a stick. A bit more fortunate in his positioning, perhaps. He's on the edge of the rough rather than being in it, so. In a tough position here. And he's probably gonna try and be aggressive. Tassone looking on with a one stroke lead, heading down the fairway of this final hole. He's got a lot of distance left to go, but that's a good spot to be. Yeah, that's a really good shot. That's pretty Didn't get too greedy there, just hit the fairway. Four. Four. Oh, he needs to hit back. <laughs> Great effort. Don't you roll. Wow. That's fine. I was for a second I was like he's going forehand roller, then he's going flex forehand, then he's going flex forehand into a forehand roller. Corey's another one of those players that knows exactly where his disc is going the second he throws it. Henderson lining up here. About 300, 250 left to get to the basket. He was definitely trying to get over the water on that shot. He put himself in a great position to do so, but gets a little unlucky. I hate to say it, but that might have been a critical mistake for Connor. Really needed to stick the green on that third shot to guarantee the birdie. Yeah, the, the door is now wide open for Zachary to sown to be crowned our fire champion. He's the highest rated player at this tournament. He's been very clean all day. He has not had a single bogey. And that is why. Incredible shot. Angle control on point. Distance control on point. He's hitting putts on the green. He wasn't dropping bombs out there. But he was playing really great disc golf. Only missed a few inside circle one. That was a just a near miss and I believe he hit off a tree that might have saved him some distance there Kyle playing from his uh, OB lie gives himself a nice look at the basket now if Connor can put this one in he could certainly put some pressure on Desone to clutch up on that last putt I do think that Zach is within the bullseye. A great upshot nonetheless. Connor Henderson playing some incredible disc golf out there today. And Zachary Tassone looks to maintain 36 holes of bogey free disc golf. Unbelievable feat here at the four chapters. We wanted a higher level of disc golf and we got it. Great putt from Corey Snyder. And we know Corey had more to give out there. He only shot a minus two in the second round, coming off an amazing minus 11. 
I heard he was moving out to the West Coast, but I hope we get a chance to film him again someday soon. Really fun player to watch. Yeah, it's been a pleasure watching him today. And Zachary Tassone stepping in and burying that putt. Yeah, Filming this card was definitely is definitely something special. I mean, seeing this amount of high quality golfers and just to high quality gentlemen, gentlemen, was it was a treat. It was a treat. Really good spirits. Thanks to everybody who came out to the tournament. Zachary Tassone is your fire champion of the 2022 four chapters. And for good reason. He displayed an incredible mastery of the woods, the open fairway. Players are rolling in after a gorgeous day by all measures. And he's going home with a one on one pound bag, folks. Yeah, tell me another TD that's doing that. <laughs> and that pound bag is so, so sweet, man. That fire colorway is just chef's kiss. Yeah, we've got Chapter 2 Air coming up next at Warwick on May 28th. We've got the Valley Forge Disc Golf League coming up. Coverage for that starting next weekend. That's what's up. Future MA1 champ. Right here. Anthony Diudo, who took down MA3 out there at the four chapters. You love to see that. Guys, what did you think of the action out there today? The vibes were top tier and the play was as well. I mean, you saw it, it was so clean. I don't think we've ever seen such clean golf on this channel, sorry, Scott. But the vibes were just so good and I couldn't have been happier to be there that day. Dan, a lot of really good competition out there. It was close coming down the entire way. Just one or two strokes of separation from our top three. We saw Andrew Stockland come back with nine birdies in a row. Nine birdies in a row. What are you looking forward to most about Chapter 2 Air? Uh, I'm looking forward to more of the same, if not better. Uh, me, this is my own personal opinion, but I prefer Warwick to Tecumseh. It's just an immaculate course and if the competition is going to be this high the level of disc golf is going to be incredible so it's going to be one to watch for sure thank you so much for tuning in to the four chapters chapter one fire congratulations to zachary Tassone. let's head back over to camp tecumseh and get a word from our winner and rounding out the day in first place with a score of minus 17 a 1000 rated first round probably even higher than that uh, we've got Zachary Tassone, who's taking home this custom pound bag. Can we get a speech? Uh, no speech, but thank you, Bria Disc Golf, for sponsoring me, and this was an awesome event. Thanks for us. Perfect. Thanks a lot, man. Anybody know Kyle Robinson? All right, folks, there you have it, the four chapters. I just wanted to give a massive shout out to John for letting us come here at Camp Tecumseh. Beautiful grounds here. He's done an incredible job with the land and his team that helps him out here. It's, it's just, it can't be stated enough how grateful we are. He did not have to say yes to letting us come out, but he did. We hope to come back again next year. We'll see you next on May 28th at Warwick for chapter two, air.